uh, give us an opportunity to act, uh, ask some great questions. And, and, you know, life is full of a lot of challenges, um, whether it's something as big that entered our world as COVID and all of the uh, implications of that, which we're still dealing with and still navigating today, right? And uh, there are even some other questions showing up and some newer thoughts and concerns around this. Um, and, and so life is always gonna be full of its um, challenges and, and uh, stresses. And I think that when we're faced with those situations and when we're faced with adversity uh, and change, it can leave a lot of us yearning for um, understanding and it can leave a lot of us yearning for um, what was, right? Because we come into uh, a new normal, which I know a lot of us um, have used that term a lot recently. And it, it leaves us asking, you know, what's happening? What's going on and, and how is this affecting us? And I think that um, in, in general, if we're, if we're living life at a high level of awareness, then I think we can, we can agree that you know those those are situations that are going to come up often, and that's what I want to talk to you about uh, this morning. I think that it's a great time to just discuss how we examine life in general and how we examine what we're doing and what questions are we asking ourselves. And I think that during trying times, we crave those answers, and um, and the power is really in asking the right questions. So as usual on Monday Morning Mojo, I'm gonna invite you to take some notes and you might find some great questions and what I'm gonna share with you this morning that you might wanna write in your journal or just think about a little bit later. Um, and, you know, because listen, we can go through life being a little asleep at the wheel or we can really look at life as an opportunity to navigate our own ship and, and make the right choices for ourselves. And that's what I wanna to talk to you about today. Um, so I think that at, any time uh, or most of the time, uh, we can question, um, you know, what's going on. And I think that what we need to question, this is something I would write down, is that we should be willing to question the logic and assumptions behind our own thinking. That we should be willing to question the logic and assumptions behind our own thinking. So for instance, how do we know that what we're thinking is the best way of thinking? How do we know that the way that we're looking at any given situation is the best way to look at it or the only way to look at it? Um, and I think that when we are get when we get more comfortable um, to really question the logic and assumptions that we make, it opens up our world for a lot of possibility. So rather than questioning the event itself, right? So rather than questioning what's going on around you and, 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 and asking things like, why is this happening or why is this happening to me? I would, I would probably ask, what is, what is the opportunity here, right? And listen, I get it. When we're going through challenging times, we might not at first be able to stop and ask ourselves these logical questions. Um, and I think that this is another... Um, you know, way that I'd like to stretch your thinking. It's about working to get out of emotion and in, excuse me, out of emotion into, into thinking more logically so that we can dial it down a little bit and then start asking these powerful questions. Um, and I think that, you know, when we're not stressed and we're not dealing with a lot of conflict, many of us, and a, a lot of you who are you know, part of this group or probably, you know, have this in common, you know, we like to ask ourselves questions around what is our purpose? And, um, you know, what, why do we have the goals that we have, which is great. Um, and some of you may, may even get deeper and ask questions around like, you know, why are we here? You know, um, what is the meaning of life? And, and that's fine. You know, Socrates led hundreds of people through those conversations, right, around questions just like that. And he and other philo philosophers like uh, Epicurus believed that philosophy was essential um, really to our well-being. It was basically, they believed that philosophy was medicine for the soul. And that philosophy is a practice uh, really that was true then and can be true today. And it's interesting because I don't know how often any of you think in terms of being philosophical, um, it is not an airy fairy way of thinking. It is really, if, if you can really um, open yourself up to what I'm talking to you about today, it is really an opportunity for you to find 
uh, tools and techniques to really create a practice around um, having these useful applications for just solving problems that everyday life throws at you, right? So just to give you a little background, philosophy, the term philosophy uh, means the love of wisdom. And it is just about questioning our thinking. That's really what it's about. It's about questioning our thinking and searching for answers. And it's about being in a state of curiosity and wonder. Um, I can remember being a child and, and asking lots of questions and always having very vivid imagination and daydreaming. And it's interesting, and, and I wonder how many of you can relate to this. So if you want to put something in the chat, let me know if um, you can relate to this. I was the kid that, that the adults would say, okay, stop asking so many questions. <laughs> You talk too much, uh, get your head out of the clouds, let's focus on what we're doing. Uh, and now I realize, you know, and I'm grateful that I haven't abandoned that. Uh, but a lot of adults do. A lot of adults stop asking questions, right? Or they learn through the, out, the external, um, um, you know, uh, the external, I'm sorry, I lost my word there. Um, influence, the external influences, that, you know, it's wrong to ask me questions or you can't be a daydreamer. But really what I've learned is that that's who visionaries are, right? And that without vision, how do we know where we're going? And so I think that on a lot of days, as I said, we are on autopilot, right? I mean, let's face it, you're going through the motions of the day, you're going through the tasks of the day. And how often do you give yourself time to reflect? How often do you give yourself time to just ask yourself what's working, what's not working? How many times do you give yourself an opportunity to just ask some questions around how can I improve what I'm doing? Uh, is there a better way? Is there someone I can talk to to learn something new that will help me? Uh, is there something else that I should be doing? Right? Any of those questions I just threw at you would be great journal questions. Uh, I think another question to ask ourselves is, is what, am I, is what I'm doing bringing me real fulfillment and joy? So I think that we really ask ourselves questions like that uh, until a crisis occurs that shakes you out of autopilot, right? A crisis occurs, a conflict, um, something that is out of the norm shows up and it shakes you out of autopilot. And then you start asking questions similar to that about what's happening, why is this happening, what is the purpose? But if we got into the habit of asking those questions every day, what would the answers reveal about our next step, about possibilities or our next opportunity? And so I think that as adults, we have to get back into the habit of asking lots of questions, just like a, a curious child would. Um, and I think that in, in unlearning our curiosity, in unlearning our curiosity, it has made some of us very passive. And I think that it really has made us uh, consider life as something that is just happening to us, rather than looking at life as something that we can design, and rather than looking at life as something that we can create. And I think that the questions we ask ourselves can be so powerful that it can really open up our thinking, kind of like the, you know, opening up the windows of your brain and letting lots of fresh air in, right? Can you remember, uh, you know, sometimes even now, like when it's really warm and muggy out, we've ha had the air conditioning on for a long time, or after the winter, that first time you open the windows and let fresh air into your house, how does that feel? Well, imagine if you could do that with your mind. And the way that we do that is by asking these critical questions that really get us thinking. And I think that learning to ask questions, especially during tough times and during uh, any, any day, any given day, can empower us to see the opportunities and can help us to understand the lessons that can come from the experience. Rather than just labeling the experience as hard or challenging or devastating or painful, what if we could commit to being more curious? How would your life change? So I would, I would invite you to write that down. How, what if I could commit to being more curious? How would my life change? So uh, what we're talking about here uh, are the elements of good philosophy. And good philosophy can offer tools to help you think more critically and ask these really powerful good questions that will open up your thinking. So another um, uh, 
philosopher Socrates, right? He, he said an examined life was about spending as much time as possible engaging in life's most important subjects like justice, virtue, piety, truth, you know, among others. Uh, but basically what we're saying is an examined life is, is, is a life that is led by someone who is awake and who is willing to ask themselves these questions and who's willing to constantly invite other perspective in. So that's another thing I would ask myself. Am I willing and comfortable in asking others for their perspective? Am I open to, to thinking that the way I'm thinking today could possibly change or be different? Think about a subject right now that you see completely different than you did, see differently than you did 20 years ago. Is there a belief that you used to have that is no longer true for you? And, and if you really got honest with yourself and spent some time thinking about it, what was the process to get there? It may have taken a, a long time, may have taken uh, over years, may have taken lots of conversations or reading or education, or maybe something happened pretty quickly, you opened up your mind to a new idea and suddenly you saw it different. So it, it's really interesting because the things that we held on to as truths in our 20s may not be the same for us in our 40s or 50s, right? And so I think that when you look at it that way, we realize that it's about evolution and it's about opportunity to see things from a different perspective. So um, I think that, you know, we can all be on this quest to find our purpose in life, but what if we just got really micro and just looked at it as what is our purpose for today? So right now it's Monday morning, new day, new week. What's your purpose today? What is the one thing that you want to accomplish, complete, start, uh, investigate, question? What is the one thing? What is your purpose for today, right? So I think that we can also create an opportunity to be philosophical and bring it right back into the moment, right? So I think another key question to ask ourselves is this one, write this down. How can I identify and separate out the difference between the things I can control and the things I cannot control, right? And if you're looking for an empowered way of living, that is one key right there, my friends, is to know the difference between the things that are in your control and the things that are not in your control. Because if you spend so much time worrying about the things that are out of your control, you will find yourself feeling really helpless and it's going to, to uh, leave you feeling really challenged. But if you are looking at the things within your control, right? So that's gonna empower you to know that you can take action because it's all about your choices. So write that word down, choice. Good morning, Jill, I see you have a question in the chat. So if asking others about feedback, do you recommend qualify those you select to ask? So uh, just to clarify your question, are you saying that seek feedback from um, a trusted resource basically? Yeah, that was the question because it sounds like you know, if you just said, oh, I'm going to ask anybody. <laughs> what, yeah, you know, well, I mean, here's what I'm really talking about today is really the process of asking yourself these questions. Not to say that there isn't going to be knowledge or wisdom that you gain from asking external sources. But I think before we get into the habit of that, can we get into the habit of trusting ourselves and asking ourselves more powerful questions? Because I think, you know, that opens up an interesting topic too. Are we programmed, for some of us, are we programmed to, to feel more prone, to feel prone, more prone to asking others questions before we ask ourselves? And I think that that's what we're talking about today. But when you are seeking feedback, or seeking you know, information from other people, then absolutely you have to take um, a moment to think about who, do you, who you wanna seek that feedback from. Because there's feedback and then there's opinion, right? So we wanna know that, there, that this resource is trusted enough to know, you know how to give you the right feedback without it being just their opinion, right? But, 
But then again, I can go deeper on that too and say that even our, you know, all of our thoughts and all of our feedback, our perspective, it's all being filtered through our senses. So my feedback may be different for you than his feedback based on the way I filter the information versus how he's filtering the information. <clears throat> so it's an interesting, it's definitely an interesting question. Um, so I think that, <clears throat> excuse me, you know, I think that it, it is about whether or not we are open to seeking information in general, right? Because again, what I'm talking about is, is a little bit about philosophy this morning and how it's very practical in our everyday life and how philosophy is just the pursuit of wisdom. And I think that, you know, if we could be on a quest for knowledge, then how does our world open up? And there's a difference, I think, too, between being informed and seeking wisdom, right? Because being informed is you're, you're getting information, uh, whether you're speaking to someone, reading something, watching, listening, right? So you're gaining information. Uh, and I think that wisdom is really about opening up possibilities. It's more about enlightenment. It's more about how you're going to use the information, right? Um, and so I think that um, one thing I'd love for you to take away from this morning is that every human being is born with the potential to live an extraordinary life. Every human being is born with the opportunity to be happy, to be fulfilled. Uh, that doesn't change the fact that life is challenging, that life will be unpredictable. It doesn't change the fact that there will be struggles and it doesn't change the fact that there will be hardships and tragedies. Uh, those are a lot of the things that are not in our control. But I think that it's important for us to believe that we were divinely created to live this big extraordinary life. And so if that is true, how are you grabbing hold of your inheritance? How are you grabbing hold of the, that truth? Right, And I think that just the fact that we were born a human being is an incredible blessing, right? And an incredible opportunity because there is no creature on this planet that has the same ability you do. There is no creature on this planet that has the opportunity to think as critically uh, and cognitively as you can, who has the ability to make choices and seek out knowledge and wisdom and to, to lead and navigate their own life at such a level as you do, right? And so I think that it is just a gift, you know, to be born human. And so are we grabbing hold of that? Are we really being mindful of that? And rather than looking at life as being hard, how can you look at life as being extraordinary and being this wonderful blessing? Um, and I think that, you know, being able to to open ourselves up to this conversation this morning and and look at the questions we're asking ourselves uh and honestly really seeking the answers because sometimes we can be full of questions but do we take the time to find the answers and do we take the time to to really examine what those answers are revealing to us right about choices and about the next direction of our path so if this is interesting to you, and if you want to dive a little deeper into, you know, this topic or study philosophy more, I'm going to give you a couple of resources. And I'm also going to give you a couple of reasons why, in case you're kind of like, I'm not sure what the heck Anna's talking about today. Uh, I'm going to give you a couple of reasons why. So I have learned uh, or come to, to understand more and more over the last several years that my modality of coaching and teaching is really philosophical, right? And so there's an entire movement around philosophical coaching and philosophical therapy. And it's really, it's, it's really about equipping the individual to know that they have choices, that they can ask these powerful questions of themselves uh, and so that they can seek wisdom. And the reason why this could be important to you, and I'll give you a few if you wanna jot anything down, um, is so that you can be of greater service, not only to yourself, but to others, right? And so I've learned as I get older and more wise that if I wanna change the world, I really just have to focus on myself and change. And that is not being selfish. That's knowing that the change I wanna see starts with me. And so if you are working on yourself and you 
are opening yourself up to really living into more of your highest potential, then you're really becoming a greater service to other people. Um, I think another uh, opportunity to study philosophy or get more into this way of thinking is to get the answers that will help you create the life that you want, right? And I think it's also about learning different perspectives and outlooks on life too, because if the way that you see the world is, is the only way, are you missing out on a lot of possibilities, right? And if you are the smartest person in the room, are you missing out on a lot of learning opportunities, right? And I think that this is also an opportunity for you to develop new strategies so that you have better tools and techniques to handle everyday life, right? Because if you're not someone who's open to thinking and, and questioning and learning new things or understanding the meaning of why something is happening, um, I think that you'll, you'll probably feel more stress. Um, so I think that this also leads to a healthier way of life um, because it gives you the ability to process and handle challenges and, and stress. It, it gives you the ability to, I think, to gain more compassion and understanding and be more empathetic in general. Um, and, and there's a lot of really positive things to come from getting better at asking good questions, right? I think it can make you a better business person, better teacher, better uh, leader, better uh, parent, better partner, right? When you can really learn how to ask yourself and other people better questions, because it will create change, which change leads to growth and opportunity in your life. It'll help you find more joy, um, more fulfillment, maybe even more stillness. There's a lot of chatter in our brains in any given moment, right? So when we seek out the wisdom by asking the right questions, it may quell some of that chatter in our mind too. Um, so I, I hope this gave you some food for thought. That's what this was about, is to give you some coaching for your mind and soul this morning and food for thought, because what we feed our mind is really important because what we feed our mind determines our thoughts and our thoughts are really shaping everything that we do and those actions, right? The things that we're doing are creating the results. So if you look around in your world right now, whatever results you're getting or not getting, I can guarantee it goes right back to the way that you're thinking. So this is an opportunity for us to really take a moment and examine that. And I think that it's an opportunity for self-reflection, not self-criticism. So I wanna make sure I'm clear about that. This is about being curious and open-minded and, and seeking wisdom and being in a state of wonderment, not in a state of self-criticism. So I, I trust that someone found exactly what they were looking for today um, because they were seeking out some information and they were seeking out some enlightenment. Maybe they didn't know exactly what it was about, but I think you have found it today. Um, and I'll leave you with, uh, remember what Plato said, the unexamined life is not worth living. So don't be afraid to ask yourself some powerful questions. So before we cl uh, close for this morning, any powerful questions from, from my people here on Zoom or on Facebook, let me know if there's anything that you wanna ask me. Did you find this to be helpful? I'd love to hear your feedback, share your thoughts here now or on the Facebook page. Jill, did you have anything you wanted to say? It looked like you were gonna come off mute. No, yeah, I, I again, I much appreciate your message. Um, and I think I put in the note here about, it's wonderful to explore the things in our lives, but wouldn't it be great if we had the patience to look at the blockages? <laughs> and, yes, and I think, what, well, what, and, I, and I, think, I think that getting in the habit of asking powerful questions will reveal that, that there is a blockage, right? And I think mm -hmm. when you are seeking the knowledge and the wisdom and the information, Remember, we don't know, we, so I believe that we do have all the answers. We may not be able to get to the answer on our own. And that's a powerful um, opportunity through coaching as well. So if you find that there are some blockages and you just really can't get on the other side of it, then you know working with a coach can help or perhaps a therapist, depending on what the situation is. Um, and, and that's okay because having someone who can see it from a different perspective is powerful. Having someone who can ask you even more questions to get you to open up and, and look at the possibilities and the opportunities um, or, or why the block is there in the first place is, is gonna move you forward. And so that may be the opportunity too. Right, right, great, thank you. 
You're welcome. Thanks for being here every, every Monday morning. Um, I appreciate you. All right, everyone, listen, have a great day. And uh, as always, uh, if you have any thoughts or questions, please share them on the Facebook group. I'm going to share also some resources for you if you want to examine a little bit more around this topic of practical philosophy. Um, I can recommend a couple of blogs and a couple of podcasts. Uh, there's also uh, the School of Philosophy. I've taken some free classes there and you may want to check that out too. So I'll put all those resources on our Monday morning uh, Mojo group on Facebook. And as always, if you find value in this, please share with other people. We're growing the community every day and I love to see that. So thanks so much for being here. Have a great day and a powerful week. Talk to you soon. Stay dry. Thanks. Yes, you too.